Hi friends, I hope this video finds you in good health. Let's talk about confidence today. If we have lack of confidence, we fail to inspire others, we miss on a lot of opportunities. On the other hand, if we are overconfident and if we fail in performing the task, we can harm our reputation and credibility. That is why it is so important to find the right level of confidence. And you can do so by improving your decision-making abilities and understanding your circle of confidence. In other words, understanding your limitations. How? Let's find it in this video. Part number one, confidence and success. There's a famous belief that your success depends on the level of your confidence. Is this true? Well, it is true and it is not true as well. Belief in your confidence is important for success and also underconfidence can negatively impact your success. But it doesn't mean that success only depends on confidence. Overconfidence can be dangerous in decision making as well. If you have very limited information and if you're overconfident about your decision making, your decision can be based on your intuition and intuition leads to mistakes. In fact, research has found that too much confidence can result in inferior performance. Psychologist Gabriela Ortingen found that those who fantasize more about success are less likely to achieve it. For example, students who think that they are very easy to succeed to secure good marks in exam, they are less likely to prepare for that exam. That is why it is important to have confidence and belief in your ability to succeed. But it is also important to not solely depend on confidence for your success because the main purpose of confidence is to give you the push that you need to start your work. It doesn't help you alone on its own to succeed. Part number two, source of underconfidence. What is it that you're extremely good at? Is it writing, photography, singing, playing guitar, or any other skill? Now think why you're good at that skill. Let me tell you why. The reason is that you perform that activity again and again more frequently, which helps you become better in that skill. On the other hand, the skills that you're not so good at them, why you're not so good at them? Perhaps, maybe you're performing them less frequently as compared to the ones that you're good at. Automatically, the things that we're good at, we have confidence, we have the right amount of confidence. But the things that we lack, we are underconfident. One of the biggest mistakes that we all perform while going through underconfidence is that we know the limitness of our abilities, the struggles that we are going through in performing that skill or task. But we are not aware of the limitedness and the struggles that other people are going through. If you're trying to learn how to play guitar and if you have a friend who is really good in playing guitar, you always face difficulties in learning in the early stages and you feel underconfident. And the biggest mistake that you may make is to compare your current ability with the current ability of your friend. You overlook all the difficulties, the underconfidence and the mistakes and the struggles that your friend has gone through at the early stages of his guitar career. Similarly, when you start a new job or a new career, you enter a new team, you face new responsibilities. And at the very beginning, you will be facing difficulties in performing those responsibilities. You may feel discouraged, demotivated and underconfident. Especially when you look around at your colleagues and you see them that they are performing their responsibilities very smoothly. Now here you may be missing the fact that those colleagues may have already done their part of and their share of difficulties. Now they are at a stage that they have already performed their task hundreds of times. And this unequal comparison is the main source of underconfidence in many of us in our daily lives. It may be obvious to you, but it's important to remember to never compare our incomplete work with the finished product of other people. Part number three, ability earns trust. You may already know Michael Jordan and Christian Ronaldo. They are extremely good in their field of sport. Without any hesitation, they can easily make a score from a surprising distance. Because they have lived their whole life in playing this sport, they have super confidence in their ability. And that ability has earned them trust among their fans. Unlike other normal players, it will be a surprise to see them fail in making a score. These people are excellent in their games not because they are confident, 
In fact, it is the other way around. These people are excellent in their games, that is why they are confident. Confidence can help us impress other people, but it needs to be backed up with practicality, with experience. And confidence can also help us build trust. For example, if you take your car to a mechanic who seems confident in what he is doing, would you trust this mechanic or would you trust a mechanic who takes out his mobile phone and looks at YouTube tutorials while repairing your car? Research also shows that if we keep all the other elements equal and constant, those people who show confidence in their work, they do gain credibility for what they do. But the problem is confidence can be faked. And the problem with that problem is you can only fake the confidence for a very short period of time. If you show your confidence in something that you're not good at it and you start performing that task, after a certain period of time, you start hesitating and that hesitation can lose other people's trust on you and it can harm your credibility. Faking confidence is not long-term sustainable because confidence needs an experience and action and ability to back it up. But it also doesn't mean to go to the other extreme, to be underconfident and pessimist about everything. You just need to find the middle path. And in this situation, the middle path is honesty. You have to honestly communicate what is your ability and based on that, other people will trust and will give you credibility. Because honesty is also found to build trust as compared to the confidence without any ability. Part number four, avoid overconfidence in decision making. We all the time make decisions and our decisions are down to future forecasts. For example, which house to buy, which city to travel, which career to choose. But the truth is, we human beings suck at forecasting. We should not be overconfident with our decisions because sometimes reality turns out differently. And one of the main reasons for that is because we are too specific with our decisions. We don't leave any room for error. We can avoid such wrong decisions by making a probability for a range of possibilities. For example, if you're going for a vacation and you're not sure about weather, just take one extra piece of cloth. Who knows the weather turns out to be cold. If you're having 100 guests, do not prepare yourself exactly for 100 guests. Expect 80 to 120 guests. It reminds me a great quote from Morgan Hossel from his book, The Psychology of Money. Planning is important, but the most important part of every plan is to plan on the plan, not going according to plan. By the way, if you're into course like this, every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Indonesia time, I post inspirational course like this that I come across in the books that I read. If you're interested, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next quote coming this Wednesday. Overall, confidence is an extremely powerful tool. But meanwhile, finding the right balance of confidence is important and difficult at the same time. The best strategy is to work on your abilities, to improve your skills. Your confidence will automatically build up to the right level. And that confidence will automatically lead you to more success. That's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching. Share it with your friends if you like. See you in the next video. Much love and bye.